you probably won't even know what this is unless you watch all my videos. This is a scoria, believe it or not. IMG scoria. Can you believe how black that this snake got? Dave Palumbo here with Muscle Serpents Daily. And guys, it is Friday. I don't know if I'll be putting this video up on Friday, but it is Friday, which means that you never know what kind of video I might do. And today I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm thinking boas. I think I'm gonna show you some cool, cool boas that I haven't maybe necessarily showed you recently in my collection, stuff that's growing up, some of the projects that I'm working on uh, for the future. And today's video is gonna be all about boas. Let's go into the snake room, take a look. What's up guys, Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today's video is big snakes. I'm not supposed to be holding big snakes, but we're cleaning some cages, so I'm just kind of letting her chill out around my neck. She's pretty mellow. This is a uh, uh, lavender line of uh, sharp albino here. And uh, it's funny because I've seen her locked with a fire head sharp male a, a lot of times this past season. And yeah, she's still eating. She's not sitting on the hot spot. So I don't, I don't, I don't suspect we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a litter from her. I, I was really suspecting that we were gonna get one from her, but once again, it's the old fire diamond curse. Uh, for some reason, anytime I breed fire diamonds, they don't want to, they don't, they don't seem to want to go. But uh, she's a great snake. She's got some good size in her, as you can see. She's very mellow and uh, you never know. She did eat, but we'll keep our fingers crossed that maybe a little later this season toward the summer, we'll get some babies from her. All right, here's a nice, beautiful hold back. Russo Red Pastel, Hypo, possible Super Hypo even. Sterling, Sterling being the recessive, patternless boa. Look at that red eye. That is not albino. That is just Russo Red Pastel, just a really, really red pastel line. And in boas, pastel is a polygenic trait. It's a line bred trait. Vin Russo bred red to red to red to red for many, many generations. And we got some, we got the red into this nice sterling girl. And I held her back because I wanna, I'm continuing the reddest of the red. And she's she's one of the reddest ones I've produced. And we will at some point, probably in a year or two, breed her as well. One of my favorite bows in the collection. This is a Labyrinth Fire that's also het for VPI T positive. One of the prettiest uh, boas I have. I love Labby. Labby and Fire go really, really well together because they both are genes that lighten up the snake. And you can see the snake has pretty much a blue eye because it's so lightened up, including the black of the eye has gotten lightened up. So that's uh, really pretty cool. Plus we all know that VPI T positive in the het form also had, creates a lighter looking snake. So even though we're not getting the full bore effect of a true T positive VPI, we do have the head form contributing along with the fire and the labby gene to give us this beautiful animal. Look at this girl, how big she's gotten. She, it's about time. I mean, she's a 20, she's a two, three years old now, but she's a super dwarf boa. This is a super onyx boa, so two copies of onyx. She's 66% head Honduran T positive in blood. I held her back because I just wanted a, I wanted a real nice super onyx female that I could you know, breed in the future. And she's a great eater. But like I said, three years old, look how small she is. And she's finally starting to get like, like I guess you could say adult, um, looking characteristics, which would bring her a little closer to being bred. There's no way you can breed onyxes under four years old. And I'd say five is probably better, but we might try her next year, we'll see. Not this season, but the following season. Um, I think she'll be ready to go. She kind of looks a little like her mother. Her mother's a single copy onyx, but look how dark those, the onyx gene is really dark. And you could tell super onyxes definitely look different than, than leopards, even though they are allelic to each other. It, it, it's different. It's a darker snake and it's a much smaller snake uh, in its pure form. Here's another really beautiful onyx. This is a hypo Honduran T positive. So it's a basically a T Honduran T positive sun glow onyx, one copy, 
66% head for blood. This is also, this girl is going on, uh, actually she's three years old right now, today. This is her birthday. Ironically enough, you can see how tiny she is. She's even smaller than the other girl because they eat very small prey atoms. They don't, sometimes they don't eat every week. That's just the way the onyxes go because they're dwarf boas. They do not need a lot of food. Where they're from, the food is scarce and they've learned to adapt. And the boas that require the least amount of food and that are the smallest survive the most on these, especially the islands off of Honduras. So we get these super dwarf boas. But you can see that Honduran tea positive. It's just a beautiful, beautiful tea positive one. All right, here's the uh, male holdback, Sterling. This is the uh, Russo Red Pastel Hypo Sterling. Uh, I showed you the female before. This is the male I held back that I'm gonna probably breed to her. And uh, he's one of the reddest that I've ever produced. So I, I, you know, every generation, I usually produce these Russo Reds every two or three years, and then I'll hold like a pair back that are the best ones and then I'll try to breed those together. So it's, it's a very long-term project at this point. I'm just trying to perfect the, uh, the Russo Red. And now also we have other projects involving Sterling that you know have blood in them potentially. We have double heads that we're trying to breed. We have some triple head stuff that is uh, para head, uh, head for blood and head for Sterling. So those are projects that hopefully in the next year or two we'll, we'll you know, give us some fruits uh, of that labor, so to speak. This, however, is, a, is a, something I'll just continue to do to produce the reddest of the red, just using line bread uh, traits. So we just basically, we're dealing with the hypo gene and we're dealing with the line bread Russo red pastel. And then of course the sterling is just patternless. So we're looking to produce a red snake via polygenic or line breeding rather than doing it towards with morphs. And because, it, you know, I'm, I'm still doing it with the morphs too, but I, I think it's kind of cool to just see how many generations I got to go to really get a truly completely saturated red snake. Wow, this girl's put on a lot of size. This is a blood leopard, 66% head call albino. And I've been, one of my little pet projects is trying to produce a leopard blood albino. I don't think anyone's done it yet. Probably there are people that are close. And I don't even know what it'll look like. But uh, the reason I want to do it is because I remember asking Tom Burke, the late Tom Burke, about when I was at his facility. I said, you know, you've produced leopard albinos, you've produced blood albinos. Would you ever do the leopard blood albino? And he said, uh, yeah, maybe if I live long enough, long enough. Unfortunately, he didn't. And so I, uh, if I don't do it and someone else does it, that's great. But I would love to just, in honor of Tom Burke and maybe even name name one of the babies uh, Burke or something like that, you know, just because uh, it was something that I know he was, he was very close to probably being able to do. And had he lived longer, he probably would have done it. But uh, this is, uh, this, this female uh, should probably be ready to breed uh, next year. So we probably have to wait one more year with her. We definitely, we have a male that's, that's already breeding another female. So he's ready. So we, we have the blood albino or I should say the blood leopard head albinos. The problem is they're 66% head albinos, so we're not really sure, but we're gonna give it a shot over the next year or two. Now we also have some triple heads that are head for blood, head for albino, and head for leopard. The good thing is that these are 100% heads. The problem is that, you know, it's triple head to triple head, because we have, we have two females and a male, so we might have to hedge our bets and put one of the put the blood leopard 66er with the, one of these females and see if he can uh, prove out to be albino and maybe that might increase our odds obviously if he's a visual blood a visual leopard and this female is het for blood and leopard it's going to make it a lot easier to hit the blood leopard obviously because and everything will be 100% uh, heads if we don't hit the visual then the question will be, she is 100% head albino. If he proves out to be 100% head albino, one out of four babies will be albino. So we might have better odds using him on her. And then uh, I have another female that's uh, a motley. She's a motley triple head that we can breed to this triple head male right here we have. So 
we definitely have inroads into the project. I don't think we're there yet because the, the, I think the snakes are too young still and, and small. But over the next year or two, this is something I definitely want to do. Leopard albino blood. All right, I had, I had to update you on this female. You probably won't even know what this is unless you watch all my videos. This is a scoria, believe it or not. IMG scoria. Can you believe how black that this snake got? There is no motley in this. This is just IMG scoria. I've never seen an IMG scoria this dark. They never get this dark. They never get full saturation in their whole body like this. And this girl has. Why? I don't know. That's why I had to hold her back. She is absolutely gorgeous. Probably one of the nicest scorias I've ever seen. You can see that scoria eye. She was totally looked like a normal scory when she was born. She had some a couple black speckles on her, and now she is almost completely saturated black. I would I would guess that this was like maybe like a hypo motley IMG or something like that. I've never seen scoria get this dark. They just don't. The IMGs just don't. The black and the scoria will get blacker, but they don't. Their whole body never gets this saturated. So this is really really pretty cool stuff going on here. All right, our uh, super fire diamond. Uh, it's in my big enclosure we have set up here. We're still ready to put a shelf in there. I think Pablo's gonna put the shelf in tomorrow. So they can kind of sit under the heat, of the radiant heat panel. Right now the shelf is not really in the right place, but they sit here and bask every day usually. And this uh, little girl ate a nice little rat earlier and she's doing really well and uh, I'm not gonna bother her too much. The other one, the male is down there under the, under the under the litter. You can see all the way in the over there. He buried himself. I don't know why he's been laying in there, but he seems to like it in there. So, oh, there's his head sticking out. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. There he is, <laughs> hiding away. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hopefully, you enjoyed all the boa stuff we did this past uh, couple. I guess you could say the past 15, 20 minutes. I love, love that Scoria IMG. How cool is that thing? That's, I, you know, I'd love for, for anyone else out there who has Scoria IMGs or possibly has one that looks like that to send me some pictures of it because you know what? I just haven't seen any. I produced a lot of IMG Scoria stuff and usually what happens is that the black striping, especially around the tail in the Scoria, just gets darker. Sometimes the band gets thicker, but you don't get black in the middle of the body where the pinks are usually found in scorias. I just never have seen that before. And this snake is so aberrant and weird looking that, you know, I'm so happy I kept her back, but um, I can't wait till she uh, she gets big enough to breed and see what, what she produces. Really pretty, pretty cool. I gotta be honest with you. And uh, you know, like I said, I, I just wanted to show you some of the bows that I really love in my collection. Some of the Onyx stuff. Obviously that Labby Fire is just off the charts as well. Hopefully he'll breed for me this year coming up. I haven't decided who I'm gonna put him with yet, but a lot of cool stuff going on, you know? And you gotta constantly be trying to figure out what the next project is, where you wanna go with it. Do you wanna make triple quad hats? Do you want to then grow those up and breed them together? Do you want to go for sure things? And so every year I always have a different like breeding strategy. This year, one of the things I wanted to produce was the super fire diamonds. And uh, I have a female that either she's got slugs in her or she's got babies in her. There's something in her. She's sitting on the hot spot. She will deliver something over the next, you know, couple of weeks. And uh, that will determine if I accomplish that goal. I don't know about my olive pythons outside. I did put them outside, so there's nothing I could really do. We just started feeding, they're all eating, so who the heck knows if, if any of them are gravid or not. Uh, probably not, but you never know. They're kind of like springish, you know, they would be laying eggs anyway, probably in the summer, not now. So it's possible that the uh, albino female does go. I don't know. I did see, like I said, one lock on her earlier in the season, but you know, you know how that goes. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Blue tongues don't look very promising either. So I struck out with my head pied boa. So, you know, had some ups and downs. We did have three really, really nice boa litters, though. Uh, we started out with that onyx litter. Then we came back with that blizzard. And then we have the blue line Aztec litter, which I haven't even really shown you them since they shed. So uh, a lot of good stuff happening. You know, you have to basically enjoy the good stuff, you know, revel in it and then the bad stuff it is what it is it comes with the territory you don't you're not gonna you're not gonna 
have a, a thousand batting average, you know. If you can get a, if you can bat 300, you're doing pretty good. That's what I always tell people. So take that for what it's worth. Don't be discouraged if you're not getting what you want, if you're not producing, if, you, if your female slugged out or your boa didn't produce what you wanted it to. It comes with the territory. Just be persistent. Don't give up. Keep doing it year after year after year, and eventually you will succeed. I promise you. I promise you. Just you cannot give up. Because if you give up, you're definitely failing. There's no way you're going to succeed if you give up. And that's the take-home message today. Guy who never gives up is Brian Bartrick, and I want to send out my love and prayers once again and my all the healing energy I can muster up. He's uh, He's got a rough, rough road ahead of him, and I'm pulling for him. I know a lot of people out there are, and uh, Brian, we love you. Work on yourself, heal up, beat this thing, and come out the other side because you're an awesome guy, and we need you in this industry. Uh, this industry is dying for Brian Barchicks. If we had 10 Brian Barchicks, we'd be a lot better off. All right, guys, on that note, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.